Hello, and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and feminist. I'm also a big history nerd. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, and anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, for the next 365 days, I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you. Each show is going to consist of three historical elements. This day in history, this day in music history, and this day in my life. Hope you love the past. Let's dig in. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today, we're going to talk about two of my favorite topics, outer space and my fellow women of the world. How do they relate, you ask? In this case, it means we'll be talking about the first woman to walk in space. Her name is Catherine Sullivan, and she was a member of the crew of the Challenger STS-41G, the 13th flight of NASA's space shuttle program. You might recognize the name Challenger from another outer space tale, but luckily, Catherine's story is a happier one than the ill-fated Challenger OV-99, which tragically broke apart 73 seconds into its flight, killing everyone on board. Back to our happier Challenger story. On this day, 36 years ago, Catherine stepped out on the shuttle and became the first woman to ever perform extravehicular activity, or EVA, in outer space. That's NASA's lingo for what we'd now call a spacewalk. She walked outside of the spacecraft for three and a half hours, but she wasn't just on that trip to take a walk among the stars. She was also instrumental in operating the new system being exhibited on that ride, which was proving that astronauts could refuel a satellite in orbit. On October 11th, 1984, Libra was in the sky, and coincidentally, Catherine herself was also born under that air sign, known for balance, equality, and cooperation. She was born in New Jersey and went to college in California. She went to graduate school in Nova Scotia, where she started participating in another kind of mission, deep sea instead of deep space. She explored both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans in several oceanographic expeditions. The same year she graduated with her doctorate, she was selected by NASA as an astronaut. A little intimidating for the rest of us out there, but that's just the kind of scholar Catherine was. Coincidentally, Catherine was childhood friends with another female space hero, Sally Ride. The two went to first grade together in 1958 and ended up training together for their space missions. I wonder if any of my kindergarten classmates are going to start a podcast. Sullivan once said of being one of the first women in the astronaut program, All the guys we walked into, every woman in their life before we arrived, was wife, girlfriend, daughter, or secretary, period. Occasionally, a nurse, but that's it. It's all you ever were. And so whether we wanted it or not, it fell on us to change their views about women. There are still a lot of hurdles for women to jump over in the name of feminism. We have to fight for our bodily autonomy, fight to be taken seriously in the workplace, and work towards appropriate maternity leave policies. But at least we now know that we can do any job that we set our minds to. And we have role models in every profession to look up to when we're picking those paths. Women like Catherine trailblaze the paths that young women like us can take today without a second thought. And I always find myself in awe when I'm thinking about them. Getting your start in a career is hard enough. I can't imagine what it would have been like if you were one of the first women on your chosen path. 1984 looked a lot different than George Orwell imagined it in his classic novel. Instead of Big Brother and the Thought Police, the world was swirling around Reagan and the Cold War. Space travel was something that united civilians and gave them something to hope for and rally around amidst the tensions in both the states and abroad. Later on in her life, Catherine returned to space to be a part of the team on the spaceship Discovery, who set up the Hubble Space Telescope, and once again in 1992 on the Atlantis mission. She's still alive today, though she retired from NASA in 1993 and from her job as an oceanographer for the U.S. Naval Reserve in 2006. During Obama's presidency, she served as his Undersecretary of Commerce for Oceans and Atmosphere and Administrator of National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. That was a mouthful, but basically that just means she worked within the government to study the environment and climate change. Her photo is in the Astronaut Hall of Fame. In her lifetime, she spent 532 hours in space, which, for the less math inclined, is around 22 days. I hope to spend a month in Paris in my lifetime, but I 
doubt I'll spend a month in space. And now for today's music fact. On this day in 2003, Justin Timberlake made his first appearance on Saturday Night Live. Like the jack-of-all-trades he is, he did double duty as host of the show and musical guest. Though it was his first time on the show, it certainly wasn't the last. Timberlake would go on to parody the Bee Gees, perform a sketch about dating Lady Gaga, appear as a single lady in drag with Beyonce, and sing his infamous D in a Box song. And now for today's final segment. I'm going to be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on an October 11th in my life. On October 11th, 2019, which is just last year, I was mentioned in the New York Times because I had the pleasure of being interviewed for their music section. And um, it was really scary because the New York Times is like a massive, massive look for a musician when you're especially somebody who started off writing music inside of their bedroom. And so it was really cool because I think that was also the first time that a lot of my family members and my friends maybe started taking me seriously. <laughs> Um, because of being mentioned in the New York Times, I know that a lot of them are supportive. So if they're listening to this podcast, I don't, I don't take it too personally. I just think that it helped me feel more confident about me being a musician. That's all. Um, but it was a really cool moment for me because I think it really helped me solidify that I was on the right path. Um, so that was one of the coolest things ever to happen to me. And it happened on October 11th, 2019. And that is all for today's episode of 365 Days with MXM Tune. Thank you all so much for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to it. And you can follow at 365 Days MXM Tune on all social media platforms to stay up to date as we release new episodes. I hope you enjoyed this one and took away something that was fun and interesting. And I will talk to you tomorrow. It's 365 with MXM Tune new facts every day so don't leave too soon i'm gonna teach you stuff no it won't be tough gonna go a year till you've had enough it's 360